Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Heartfelt Presence. Uh, I'm your host, Peter Adrian. Today, we're here with Eline. Is that right? Did I pronounce That's it? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yes. good. <laughs> you know um, it. But just before I start to bombard you with questions, um, for those that don't know, Heartfelt Presence is a, uh, a group of volunteers who provide a 24-7 Zoom room. So if ever you feel like hopping on, if you want some feeling like you need some clarity on something or you just want to live in more peace or just have someone listen to you, the room is there for you. It's heartfeltpresence.org, so you can just hop on it anytime. It's completely free. And Eline is one of the coaches on this website. So um, my first question for you, I guess, is, well, welcome and thank you for coming on. Not really a question. Um, <laughs> thank you. But, Pleasure to be here. So, like, I'm just curious about your story. What, what, what are you all about? <laughs> yeah, what what am I all about? That's a big question. Hold on, but, um... hold that thought. The door just randomly opened. Okay. It gives you, it gives you an extra couple seconds to think about. <laughs> all right, resume. Yeah, well, um, I live in the Netherlands, um, and um, I work there as a coach, a trainer, author, um, and, um, well, it's it's... Basically, my mission to um, help people to have a more lighthearted, heartfelt experience of life. That, that's about it. And, um, yeah, I do that by talking to people um, individually, in groups, by writing blogs, books, and sharing whatever it is that, that has helped me to surrender to life in a more mm, pleasant way. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Do you like, <clears throat> can you take us through your journey of, I don't know, like how, how has your understanding of life and every, kind of what yeah. you touched on here, how's that evolved for you? Yeah. Well, I was always, I was always searching. I, I was a real searcher. Um, and I searched to understand myself, um, to figure myself out. To figure life out because I was very interested in how it all worked, but also because there was something that I, I just, I didn't get. Hmm. I didn't get the phenomenon that sometimes out of the blue, I just turned into some kind of cramped up, insecure version <laughs> of me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I really wanted to understand why that happened because if I knew why it happened, then I could fix it and then mm -hmm. I would never be that version of me again. Just so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I was just always interested in, in what moves people and, and why do they behave the way they behave. And, um, so, um, I, that set me on a, on a kind of exploration journey. And um, I encountered all kinds of cool stuff and theories and models and, and, and books. And uh, I learned a lot and I gained insight. But I never seemed to reach the end of the journey. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I, at the time, it wasn't really a problem. But what I didn't see was that I was... Um, I was unconsciously, um, my, my, my point of view was that I was not there yet. Mm -hmm. And by chasing to get there, I, I was never going to get there. But then, um, I, I stumbled upon this three principles. Uh, I read, I read about it. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know what it was, but I was just curious. So, uh, I, I started Googling and then I, uh, I found, uh, Michael Neal's website, who is a 3P coach. Mm -hmm. And, um, he, I, I saw he wrote a book, The Inside Out Revolution. So I ordered the book, but because that was what I always did order books, read books or yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, follow programs or, um, and then I read that book and, Really, 
that's when my journey stopped. Mm. Not really the journey. Now that's not right. But the, the, the urge to, to search. The seeking. The seeking. The yeah. seeking stopped. And uh, I finally understood why that happened, that, that, that sudden emergence of the insecure, cramped up version of me. Mm-hmm. I, I really understood where that came from. So okay, the so, answer was answered. So uh, tell us the answer. No, I just, um, <laughs> what, what did you hear uh, from reading that book? What, what yeah. struck you? Yeah, what struck me was that um, what I was experiencing in, in certain uh, situations was my own or my own beliefs about the situation mm-hmm. and that it was not in fact the situation that was making me feel that way or the people involved in the situation that were making me feel that way this way but that it was what I um, sub- unconsciously projected onto the situation mm-hmm. that was making me feel that way and um yeah that was really helpful for me because then initially it made me less afraid of my stress um it was for me it happened in situations where i was the center of attention that was always stressful for me when i had to speak up and and make myself visible but those were the moments when i cramped up and you know because i was in those moments so afraid of, um, you know, um, that, that, that my face would redden or that my voice would choke up or that I wouldn't know what to say and that people would think that I was a loser or, mm-hmm. you know, that, 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 that I thought <laughs> the emotions that I felt in that moment, I really thought that they were telling me something about what's going to happen in the future, mm-hmm. about what other people are going to think of me about who I am as a person. I really thought that that was what the emotion in the moment was telling me. And I was so afraid of it because I didn't want that to happen. You know, it, that cannot happen. Um, so in being so afraid of it, um, I, I tried to grab hold of it, try to fix it, try to change it, try to control my experience. Mm-hmm. But that didn't work at all because then I was so um, not present in the moment, but so in, involved in my own insecure and, and, you know, the turmoil of my own beliefs that it would become a self-fulfilling prophecy because then I would not be able to make a connection and speak mm-hmm. from the heart. I would, I would fall back on my conditioned, uh, behavior, which was, ooh, shut down, re- retreat. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that, that's what, what I, that was my, mm, coping mechanism mm-hmm. in those situations. So, um, then it would become my reality that, oh no, I, you see, it, it would be, um, I would be confirmed in my beliefs. Because I, 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 um, I couldn't make a connection. Um, I didn't feel connection. Uh, I failed again. Mm-hmm. That was probably my personality. There was something wrong that mm-hmm. other people didn't suffer from, but I did. And that was just a confirmation of what I had come to believe. Yeah. It almost like sometimes when I think about these things, I think about, um, you know, when you have a microphone, mm-hmm. you like bring it close to the speaker and there's like the feedback thing that happens. Yeah. So it's like, like you think a thought, you know, oh my God, I look stupid right now or something like that. And yeah. then you feel this anxiety and then the anxiety is like, oh, wow, I really need to look into this thing because it's really important. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Mine, it's kind of yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. It's the, the anxiety. We, I, I, I took it as a alarm, you know, an alarm. <gasps> danger. There's danger mm-hmm. ahead. There's danger ahead. So then you really believe there's danger ahead. And then you get stressed up even more. You, 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 you fall back in a fight, flight or freeze mm-hmm. mode. But in fact, in reality, there's, there's no danger at all. And the stress that you're feeling is just feedback. It's just feedback about what you've come to be, that there's something that you're believing 
about the situation, mm -hmm. projecting onto the situation. So initially, that was really um, reassuring for me to be able to see that the stress that I was feeling was something fleeting, didn't have any substance and would pass. And that was that was a reassurance to know, okay, I'm feeling this right now, but I know it's going to pass. It's, so that was the, the first, you know, mm, uh, relief that, that it gave me. But the interesting thing was that the more I, I just started to be aware of these dynamics in myself and the mechanism, um, the less, um, my stress appeared to me to be a, an alarm. And the more it's becoming just a, a friendly reminder yeah. or a loving invitation. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the now. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how we kind of, yeah. we have a tendency go to, your thinking. we have a tendency to paint our um, emotions. Some, some of the emotions as being like bad. Yeah, like exactly. Kind of yeah. And then there's the, the, this other school of thought, which is like, like total, uh, acceptance, but it's mm -hmm. kind of an acceptance where it's like, you have to feel this way right now. And, yeah. and, and I feel like there's, it's not like this middle ground, but, but seeing your emotions as like helpful feedback, like you say, to bring you back into the present to like, it's like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm so lost in all this, all these thoughts and yeah. that's creating my anxiety and the anxiety isn't there to scare you. It's there to be like, just to kind of tell you you're kind of yeah. some thoughts right now so it's yeah. like thank you thanks anxiety yeah. i wouldn't yeah. if it wasn't for your anxiety you wouldn't know when you're caught up in some crazy thoughts right yeah exactly <laughs> so every emotion is friendly wow <laughs> that's just a very different outlook mm -hmm. and it, it's so reassuring and so relaxing because oh i don't need to fix any anything um, there is nothing to be fixed because you cannot fix an emotion. Yeah. It's, it's going to pass when, once it's allowed and felt it's going to disappear because mm -hmm. everything is always changing and always moving. Including... Especially when you really see that, that what's creating that feeling is you digging into something. Yeah, you, exactly. You, it's like noticing that you're, you're hitting yourself or that you're, you're pinching yourself. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, this, this hurts like, okay. You know, I just, this is just part of life. It's like, Oh, well, like, what am I doing? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's so, you know, when, when I started to see this, I noticed how, how easily you get caught up in the illusion of there's something to control and also how how deeply your personal thought system or your ego or whatever or your, mm -hmm. your mind wants to has a preference for feeling nice and being in a quiet peaceful mood oh yeah yeah and you know then there was a phase when i when i started to um wanting to still wanting to change my experience by using my insights in how it works so then i would i would notice a lot of turmoil inner turmoil and then i noticed myself trying to surrender <laughs> <laughs> to whatever it is that i'm feeling <laughs> um so i still had a preference you know for and still couldn't see that uh, it's just the human experience to have all kinds of experiences. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with you if you're feeling bad in any way. You didn't do anything to feel bad. And when you're feeling good and everything is at peace and you don't need anything from the future or from anybody else, it's not because you did something smart or good, but 
the ego likes to claim. Oh yeah, know? like take the credit. <laughs> yeah, it's take like the, the reason credit. you feel good today is because you cleaned your room and you ate healthy. That's why you yeah, feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep that up, and you'll continue to feel good. I yeah, mean, it's, it's like a, it's one of these. What's what's the word for? It? I'm sure there's so many really nice metaphors for this, but like just uh, like you think that. Uh, or, or rather, through the lens of this, our kind of the personal thinking system. Uh, whenever we take credit for something that happened, and we say, "Oh, this this happened, so I feel good," and then we feel good about that. Underlying that is this belief that that something in the in the past, something that you did, can make you feel bad, and so it's sort of like. I guess that's why in, in religions, pride is considered a sin, possibly. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's like you get this like, oh, I'm I'm great yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But it just underlies, underlying that there's that there's that you are susceptible, you are vulnerable, and you have to pay for past actions or past things that you've done. And so, yeah. it, like, I think it's kind of like exposing that and seeing that that's a lie. Yeah. That you're really not subject to the past at all. You can always come back to peace of mind now. Yeah, exactly. And even, you know, um, I, I remember um, I was really on, on it's this expression cloud, cloud nine. Uh, I was really in a blissful Blissed kind out. of state. Yeah, yeah. Like, like a few weeks, everything was fine. I was, I was so in the now and I didn't need anything to change and it was all, wow, rosy and her. Uh, and then, something happened and you know it triggered in the in, in the moment it triggered pew, a lot of insecure thinking and i just was i i fell out of of the cloud i'd call it <laughs> no it's, it was really you know back down to earth mm -hmm. and it was such a contrast and i didn't want it i didn't want that you know because it was really like um I, um, I was in a state of mind where, where there was a lot of repetitive, anxious thinking. Mm -hmm. Oh, you failed. You're a loser. Mm -hmm. You failed. You know, like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not a state of mind that I very often have. So it, when I have it, it, it feels oh, really yeah. like, Oh my God, what, what did I do wrong? You know, mm -hmm. and then why, why this contrast? Because I was feeling so, you know, I was feeling so okay and almost. I was thinking, I didn't realize it, but looking back, I was taking credits for it. Mm. Oh, look at me. Hmm. It's going very yeah. well with my insights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always, uh, almost lighting up, you know. Yeah. I got, I got the stuff. <laughs> yeah, I have it in a box. I got, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I was, uh, smashed down back on the, on the, on the ground and, and I was, I was resisting it so much and I was lying awake at night and I, I noticed myself trying to use my insights to break my own resistance, but um. that doesn't work. And then, then finally, um, there, there came an insight that I just, uh, no, it wasn't really an insight, but it was just like, okay, then I'll just weather it out. Mm, yeah. Like, Whatever. Yeah. Surrender. It's just, it's you know? just raining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll weather it out. <laughs> it will pass eventually. And then, then immediately relaxation mm. came. And then I started to have such profound insights. I re, I saw, I saw, a pattern so clearly and I, 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 I saw it so, it was so obvious that I, that it was really, uh, that pattern had to do with me taking things personal. Mm -hmm. And, and it really, I saw it at such a level that I was liberated from it. Mm -hmm. And I started to feel, to think, oh my God, what is, how interesting that you can experience such different emotions and, and there can be such a contrast. And oh my God, there's a lot of people that always feel as low as I have been feeling. Oh, I'm so thankful that that isn't me. Mm -hmm. And then I start to have all these wonderful, beautiful feelings. 
<laughs> I had a really similar experience. Yeah. It's fascinating, you know, because prior to the moment that I personally had, you know, an a, a insight or an experience of seeing that my experience was basically self-created, being mm -hmm. self-created at, at, at every moment through the power of thought. Um, like after that moment, my life just got so much easier. And, and it's, you know, it's because I just, I didn't like whenever in the past, whenever I'd had insecure thinking or anxious thoughts or whatever, I didn't see them as thoughts. Like no. I just, I, no. I saw them as yeah. life, you know, yeah. like this thing happened. That's why I feel upset. Yeah. But then after that, it's like, wait a second, I'm thinking this, like I'm creating this in my mind. And like, just when that switched, it, it became that sort of like life was just, the vast majority of it was really soft and smooth. Yeah. And, nice. and then, uh, but the thing is when you walk on soft and smooth sand for a long time, the moment you step into like, you know, the ego world or whatever you want to call it, it's like hits you in the face. Yeah, and exactly. And it's kind of this thing because yeah. in the past, that state of mind, that like rocky state of mind was, I guess, sort of my default. And so, yeah. I learned to live with it. I learned to like cope with it. And so mm -hmm. it's like, it's almost like you're taming this dragon that really wants to, and you're just like, okay, do you just keep, you know, put, put the, what's that word? When you have the kettle and you put the thing on it. Yeah. Uh, the, the little, <laughs> no, the, the, yeah. Yeah. Something I don't else. know, but I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, there's this constant underlying feeling of like a little bit of stress, a bit of anxiety, a bit of rockiness, but you cope with it. And but after you experience that full release from that, and that becomes sort of this almost consistent experience of life, then you get the moments that you get back to it, the rocks are like super sharp. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and I remember that like something similar to what you were saying happened to me where um, I had a very uh, uncomfortable interaction with someone. Mm -hmm. let's, let's just leave it at that. Uh, it was just very, very uncomfortable and very, it just felt so off. And, um, and I was, I was after that experience, I was like ruminating about it mm. for, you know, a day or so. And that feeling of discomfort at that point in my life felt very foreign to me. Whereas before mm. it was kind of yeah. like normal, but it still felt so foreign and it was so uncomfortable. And I was like, ah, why? Like. And I really thought I, there was something to figure out about it. You yeah. know, I really yeah. thought, okay, if I, yeah. if, maybe if I said this, or maybe if, you know, the other person said that or this, I was like, but oh, it's such a, I just thinking, thinking, you know, Yeah. and it feels like in those moments, it really feels like you're trapped. Yeah. You know, it feels like yeah. as far as the eye can <laughs> see is just this bleak, uh, cloudy, dark muckiness. Yeah. And then I remember a day later, I just. It was kind of like, it's kind of like you're dreaming in a dream and like you, you kind of in the back of your head, you know, it's a dream and, and you've got to shake yourself. It's like, wait a second. Like, what am I doing? Like, I know this is thought. I know I'm creating this. And in that moment, I, I just draw, I just let it fall away. Like yeah. literally it's that simple. I let it fall away. And within probably 20 seconds, I was just laughing and feeling great again and feeling happy. And then suddenly all these dark murky clouds that looked like they extended for infinity just kind of disappeared. And it yeah. Was <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and that's so amazing that we all walk around with the ability to, to have exactly this experience again and again, wake up out of your thinking, wake, wake up out of the, um, the drama of your mm -hmm. emotions and your thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's why there, there, they are no problem. The, 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 the dramas that it's, it's okay. It's part of life. No problem. They can harm you. You can, you can snap out of it. Yeah. Through understanding. It's so, like, it's kind of like playing with, uh, with fire a little bit and it, it kind of hurts, but it doesn't actually harm you because no. underneath you're still intact. Yeah. Yeah. And um so it really for me helped me so much to come to terms with my own humanity. 
and to see that is we we have a brain you know and our brain is going to project all kinds of shit from the past onto the future and onto the present moment because that's what our brain does it tries to make sense by spinning stories by giving meaning by um making looking for patterns drawing conclusions um so that that is what our brain does that's what it's for we can create with our brains mm-hmm. and it is going to project all kinds of shit so you cannot prevent <laughs> yourself from being triggered mm-hmm. you cannot prevent yourself from experiencing you know this contraction or this cramping or or stress or whatever there's no way that you can ever prevent that from happening but you don't need to yeah yeah there's so much uh beauty in that it's like yeah so much so many people uh spend their life myself included in the past of course but like we spend our lives trying to manage everything around us so that nothing will trigger us yeah well you know the, i don't know the weather it's impossible but, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. like, everything and but the thing is is like if you understand that you don't actually have to be afraid of when you get triggered and that's actually just like this helpful feedback that's letting you know you've stumbled into some kind of you know thinking pattern or whatever and all you got to do is drop it yeah it's like there's you can just you know i feel like this it's like um those mouse traps or whatever you, know, mm-hmm. you walk on them and they snip your feet and it's like you could just walk on those and they can just snip and they can go off like crazy you can get all triggered and yet if you understand that like the resilience the coming back to peace of mind and back into that beautiful feeling is really only a matter of oh it's triggering okay and then the mouse trap does a little flip and then it lands, yeah. and that's it <laughs> yeah. it's like okay great it doesn't really matter like i'm fine <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and and the the beautiful thing is that it at the same time the the difficult thing is that it it doesn't you don't get there through effort mm. or action or trying or striving there's nothing to do it's just, it's only um becoming more aware and you don't even need to uh, you, you know we 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 live our lives and life happens so uh you're going to experience all kinds of situations that are going to be challenging you don't have to go looking for it it will happen <laughs> on the sun accord because that's life but while you are living you can um you can put on um an extra pair of glasses so to speak and and just be aware of what's happening inside of you mm. not judging it not judging it but just be aware and be aware of your reactions and and be aware of um the times that you're cramped up and stressed out but mm-hmm. also the times when you're not it, those are more difficult to be aware of because then you forget yourself you disappear when you're just in the now oh yeah 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 <laughs> so, you only really like yeah. you really need to remember like there is this you know vague experience of feeling happy that seems so far away when when you're when you're not feeling happy yeah when you yeah. are you're just enjoying life and you don't think about it exactly <laughs> yeah 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 but it's very helpful to start to notice all these different state of minds that mm-hmm. you can be in yeah it's like yeah reading all the time yeah and then um eventually uh, it's going to become more clear and clear to you that innocently we we hold on to our own stress full experience by trying to control it mm-hmm. by thinking about it by being in resistance to it and also by trying to escape it also 
those are all, I think, what different ways to try to control our experience. Mm-hmm. But we do not control our experience. We don't. Mm-hmm. We we are like seal ships on the ocean on our way to our destination. And we, we think that we are the ones steering ourselves towards our destination by by, by mani- manipulating the, the rudder and the, and the yeah. sails. But in fact, um, it's the currents of the ocean and it's the wind mm-hmm. that move you towards your direction. Uh, we I don't make that. them happen. That's a, yeah. that's a great metaphor. Yeah. I really like it. yeah. We don't make the winds happen and the currents happen. And it- but... Yeah, no, so, um, but I think the intellect has the illusion that they are the ones doing and steering it. And then the intellect has its own, uh, opinions about what needs to be the direction. No, or... the rudder needs to be that way. And say, <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. You, know, you gotta think and... like this and you gotta do it in this position and yoga. And now yeah. Right? And it, it, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, it gets really upset when the wind suddenly drops. Or when the wind turns, or when an iceberg looms up, or when it's it's uh, being la- uh, you know passed by by a more beautiful, a faster ship, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then it gets really upset and annoyed and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but if the wind drops, that it is what it is. And however hard you believe that the wind shouldn't drop, you know, it's just going to make you suffer. Yeah, the wind's so, going to win. The, the wind's wind going to win things. Exactly. So we're going to wind up in our de- on our destination, um, and we can go with the flow or resist the flow. And mm-hmm. in both cases, we're going to wind up in the same place. But when we resist, it's going to be um, accompanied by a lot more suffering, and hard work, and laboring, and whatever. Mm-hmm. But if you see that um, there is an iceberg, we need to make a detour. That is what it is. And you accept that it is what it is. Then the intellect is super useful because the more knowledge you have and the more skills you have in sailing, the more you're going to make, you will be able to make use of the, of the force of the currents and the winds. Mm-hmm. So the intellect is not the enemy. You don't need to transcend your intellect or your ego you just if it knows its place it it can be used Hmm. to deal with whatever life is presenting you with i feel like like the wind the wind makes such a great metaphor and and i even i relate to that almost um at an experiential literal level because there are moments where when I'm feeling so still and so at peace, like, you know, I have several memories of just like walking on my balcony and looking outside at the view. And in that experience, there's this feeling of complete emptiness, but it's not like an emptiness, like a, like my heart is missing. No, it's like no, no. An emptiness of just this pure allowing. And I feel like, like a, like a, like a transparent tube through which life just moves. Through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, yeah. that's, it's just like, yeah. life is just moving through me and, I, and yeah. I don't have to apply anything to it. I don't need to do anything about it. And it's just this like, almost feel like it's, uh, I'm being washed, I'm being cleaned from the yeah. inside. Yeah. <laughs> you just like, shh, just watching. Yeah, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can feel it when you, when you speak about, about it. I, yeah. And, it's just, we can surrender to life. We can trust that life will bring us to our destination. Mm-hmm. But we don't need to eradicate our ego or deny our humanness while doing that. That's the beauty of it. Well, I think, like, trust, I feel like trust is such a huge thing. It's definitely a word that's that's been coming up in my experience in the last few weeks. And I've just, I've grown more and more appreciative. Like, whenever we are digging into something let's say painful we're mm-hmm. digging into a painful memory or we're worried about the future or or anything really <laughs> anything that creates a kind yeah. of negative emotion it's in that there's this lack of trust that you can't let go 
Yeah. Really fundamentally, it's like, yeah. because deep down we all know, if I let go of this thinking, I'll come right back to peace. I'll come right back to the present moment. But trust is something that I feel for me has been like a huge uh, development throughout my life. And like just the trust that, you know, if I let go of my worries and I fall back into that peaceful center that's always here, will life work out well? Yeah. And And my experience has been like, you know, like there's two parts. One is that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it doesn't really matter how it looks like it's working out because inside you feel well. You're you're flowing yeah. with life. So yeah. and that in itself is inherently peaceful. So, um, but the other one is there's almost this experience of like life living you. Like when yeah. when when I feel in tune and at peace in myself, I feel this almost like this grace, like everything in life is moving with this sort of synchrony yeah. and things just unfold so perfectly and so magically. And, and it's just like, then I have doubt, right? Then doubt happens. It's like, this can't be real. Like things yeah. don't turn out. You have to, you know, you got to move the sail and you got to, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. no, nah, yeah. go back to the peace thing. I like the yeah. peace thing better. Right? And then everything moves nicely. And And that's the human experience. That's it. Because it, it needs to be like that. Because if you only experience bliss, there's not going to be an experience of yourself and of life. Um, you know, I was thinking about uh, our heartbeat. Our hearts beat because of the, the dynamics between contraction and relaxation. Mm -hmm. Contraction, relaxation. And the one... Um, Move, leads to the other and vice versa and you know without a contraction there wouldn't be a relaxation there wouldn't be a heart pulse there wouldn't be life and um it is like we also have a mental heartbeat we have contraction and relaxation and contraction and relaxation and mm -hmm. they need each other because without contraction there won't be relaxation there won't be an experience of life and like we completely trust our heart beat process. You know, we don't worry about, oh, my God, after this contraction of the heart chamber, is there going to be a relaxation? Mm. We don't. We trust and we, we know it's not that's not up to us. That's just life running through us. But with our mental experience, we fear so much that there won't be a, a relaxation mm -hmm. after the contraction. And we don't trust that life will take care of it. Oh, yeah. Because it feels, it's like, like following that metaphor, like when the self, the mind, the heart, whatever is like contracted, it's almost like a completely different reality to yeah. when it's open. Yeah. And so like when it's contracted, it feels like I've always been a depressed person. I've always felt like shit. I'm, I'll, I'll never amount. And it just, it really, it just colors your whole reality. Yeah. And then when it opens, it's like a different reality. So it's like the heartbeat yeah. is like a heartbeat between these two realities, just like. <laughs> yeah. And that's what makes the human experience possible. So we don't need to label it in any way. We don't need to have any thoughts about it in any way. We can surrender to it. Mm -hmm. And then it all gets very interesting. Because um, a bad mood can be very interesting. <laughs> it can, you know, in the moment, it feels like something that, that shouldn't be. But then um, when you're further on and you look back, and you look back upon it and you see, wow, this was really something that helped me see something that I didn't see before. It was actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. Although at the time I labeled it as very, very bad. Yeah. I, I feel like life has this way of bringing to the surface s stuff that, you know, we don't even realize we're holding on to. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, I don't want to say it's like subconscious in another world. 
it's like it's still here. We we hold on to things in the present, but sometimes we just don't look at it, and so we go around living our lives, and then something happens, and it springs up what we were holding on to, and it's just like a golden a golden opportunity, or or rather like an invitation to to let go and and fall deeper yeah. into that into that flow. Yeah. Exactly, and and from that perspective, every uh, experience of anxiety or stress or or whatever, is just an opportunity, a, a, a catalyst for for growth, mm -hmm. presented to you by life. Yeah. Um, so that's a, a much more friendly way to look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's not this. <laughs> This yeah. evil emotion and fear of death yeah. that's trying to grab you. Yeah, it, It's exactly. a friendly indicator that's letting you know there's something in there that you can release. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you, you can, there's something that you're not seeing right now. But you can, you can come to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then also, you know, the blaming falls away. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bad person for having this bad experience. There's something wrong with me because I feel bad. It falls away. No, you're, ju you're just a human being experiencing life, learning, growing, becoming a more compassionate, loving, understanding person. It's really interesting how the, how, how blame happens. Very understandable. Um, I was watching a video the other day of a guy that was born without cheekbones. And so his mm. eyes were like really kind of like saggy. Yeah. And apparently he was abandoned as a baby. His his birth parents abandoned him. Mm. And he was kind of like adopted by someone else. I showed him a lot of love and everything. And his story is really amazing because... Uh, I think at some point he tried to contact his birth parents and said, hey, like, if you want to meet up, like, uh, I'm, I don't hold any resentment, something like this. Don't paraphrase me, but, um, mm. uh, like, I don't hold any resentment. Like, I'd like to see you if you're down. Yeah. They were like, no, we won't, we don't want anything to do with you kind of thing. And he obviously, I think he felt heartbroken in that moment, but he, this whole, like the, his whole, um, what he was saying it was all about how he was doing well and how he understand he understood his parents and he understood that yeah. they had their own reasons for things and and he was able to this to come to this like it's almost like he's in the perfect situation to blame someone else for, for yeah. messing up his life yet he didn't and i and i think the reason he didn't is because he understood that they didn't effect they didn't um they didn't destroy his life because he's already whole inside yeah and i think when people realize like if i were to realize at any given i could blame the whole world i can blame all the presidents and everything but if i realize that within me there's a space that's unaffected that's pristine and unconditioned by all of experience then why would i spend my time blaming other people when I could just enjoy yeah. the present moment. Yeah. And and that what you're describing, that, that space, that is our essence. It is who we are. It's it cannot be God. We cannot be separated from it because it is it is mm -hmm. what we are. But we are so hypnotized by the by the forms of the world and by the drama of our own thinking and emotions mm -hmm. that we overlook this this essence yeah we it, have it, almost, it recedes so far back in our awareness that we sometimes we just completely forget yeah that there is that presence and that space within us yeah really exactly just get like so drawn into things yeah but mm -hmm. it, it it cannot be go gone it, it cannot because it is what you are yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that i think when when you're identified completely with the personal thought system, with your concepts about yourself and the world and other people and your memories and, and your patterns and, you know, that, 
when you're when you're identified with that, then life becomes becomes um, hard, and the, the world becomes a threatening place because you're separated and mm-hmm. you're you have to defend yourself from all kinds of things coming at you, and then you start to suffer. Um, because you're, you, you cannot see that space beyond your personal thinking, Mm -hmm. but it is, it is who you are. So you only need to, to realize what is already there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's when the, the, the searching and the seeking stops. And I think it's so, uh, society is, is, also very helpful in us forgetting the dimension of being is what I sometimes call it, you know, the, that space you're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's just the, the deepest dimension within our inner world. Oh yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and, um, yeah, society, um, from a very young age on, we are being bombarded with all kinds of messages that, that point to um, only the dimension of, of the personal thought system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, and, and also it's a cultural thing. We all share. Yeah. It. Yeah. Um, I was speaking to someone the other day who was, uh, had a, had a, uh, a disease, a, you know, a serious health diagnosis, let's say. And she was speaking about uh, talking to her family and uh, I think like maybe one of her, one of her kids, uh, girlfriends mm-hmm. or no, or wife, something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> this is actually kind of complicated to explain while maintaining, you know, confidentiality. <laughs> uh, oh, so okay. Let's say, let's say, um, <laughs> uh, uh, Steve had a son. Alex mm-hmm. and Alex had a wife, uh, Jolene. Okay. And yeah. So, so Steve has, um, a disease and then <laughs> why am I doing this? <laughs> Alex says, you know, Oh, like, I'm sorry. Or, you know, being empathetic, of course. Mm-hmm. And then Jolene says, Oh, you're not worried enough. You need to be more worried. Like this is, this is your, yeah. Like your father, oh, like, yeah. You need to be more worried about this. And it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's true. I'm not being considerate. I'm not being worried enough. And we just like, it's like this association that we all like, uh, what's the word? Like, um, you know the word I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. We're all like solidifying it in each other's yeah. minds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and then, so we're all pulling everyone else's attention away from yeah. that space. Yeah. <laughs> And then yeah. when we're away from that space, it's like, oh, I better pull other people's attention from there too. And so we become this whole civilization of like yeah. being out of touch with our inner self. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's so, there's nothing more useless than worrying. But the message here was you need to worry. Mm-hmm. Why? What is this going to solve to worry? Exactly nothing. Yeah, you're gonna feel miserable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what we do, we do it. We all do it. And somehow, when when we are worrying, we we feel like we're solving something by worrying. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's or or rather, we feel like we're going to solve something eventually. Yeah. If we yeah. Continue to worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But well, what does Steve need in this situation a very worried son mm. or just a compassionate son yeah who's not busy with his you know controlling his own inner turmoil because then it's all about him about his son this father doesn't need that yeah he just needs someone who's with him with an open heart that's all mm-hmm but it's the illusion of control, I guess. Yeah. But and you, we, you can't help but like, I mean, because we've all been there, of course. Yeah. We all un- understand the convincing nature of the reality that's Absolutely. projected from that way of thinking. Yeah. And it's totally like, 
like it, it's a mind fuck for lack of better words. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and you you do feel quite stuck in it. And yeah. that's completely normal to feel stuck in it. Same way when you're yeah. having a nightmare, you just, you feel stuck in a nightmare. Waking up doesn't seem like, like the idea of waking up seems like a dream when you're in a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. So, that's, that's, that's <laughs> just a characteristic of being in that state. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. It's like this, this reality that we perceive is just a characteristic. Yeah. Of that state of mind. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So that is what it is. So, it, and that's totally okay. <laughs> you don't need to fix it. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be more aware of how or have more insights or because it's going to happen. Mm. But when it happens, you can step out of it. Yeah. You can wake up out of your, your day nightmare anytime. And. You've got, you've got your emotions to help you do that. Exactly. They're like, hey, yeah. what are you doing? Wake up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it is hard to see when in that state, when in that contracted state. You cannot see it in that state. So mm -hmm. that's the, the, the paradoxal thing about it. Because that, that's, I think, when the, the illusion arises that you, that you should be doing something about it. But you can't. Mm -hmm. because when you don't see it, you don't see it. Yeah. So it's like if people like us talking about this, if someone is listening right now and they're in that state, what it sounds to them, and I guess there might actually be someone listening who's in that state. Yeah. So hello. But if I'm imagining someone being in that state, listening to this and being like, I don't have the slightest clue what they're talking about. It sounds all made up might sound stupid even yeah but that's just again a characteristic of when we're in that state yeah we just we're our mind is completely it's looking in a totally different direction yeah. than than that space within us and that yeah. being of who we really are yeah so that's why it's very useful and helpful to have conversations about that other dimension yeah. And that, that in itself is going to help because it's going to make you aware that there actually is that deeper dimension mm -hmm. in yourself that you didn't see before. Yeah. That's interesting, though. And it's like I've grown a new appreciation for the stories that that religions promote. You know, the whole thing of like, no. like you're going to go to heaven when you die. And then yeah. people take that very literally. Um, <clears throat> but there's n absolutely no way for the thought system that's caught in, let's say, like the, a lower reality to understand th that the beingness, which is like yeah. before it. And so like it has to understand through stories. It has to understand yeah. through whatever symbolism like can can, you know, kind of um, like even the idea of time. Like, you'll feel better in 10 minutes. It's like time is is kind of like our personal thought systems bridge into the new world. It's like the mm. only way we can imagine. Yeah. If something's not now, if yeah. you're talking about a, uh, uh, an experience and it's not now, then it has to happen through time. Like, and that's the yeah. only way that that the mind and that level can understand. But in reality, it's happening now. And we just can't see it because yeah, we're caught yeah. in that world. <laughs> so it's like, oh, one day you'll go to heaven. It's like maybe helpful because it gives you the idea that there is another reality. But eventually that idea is going to have to dissolve and we're going to have to find out that heaven is here. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's a glorious moment, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we cannot hold on to it. We can't. We see mm. it and we feel it. Yeah. And then it eludes us because then we want to grab hold of it and we start to think about it. Yeah, and then it's put in a box again. Yeah, but exactly. But it's it, it it cannot be understood on an intellectual level. Mm -hmm. It can't. But it, but can, it can be experienced. It can exactly. Be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's just you can come to see how how you're always projecting all kinds of stories onto what is. 
and you can more and more by seeing it um, be okay with sur- with, with, with not knowing not knowing what's going to mm-hmm. happen, what needs to happen, what this means. And by surrendering to, to not knowing, um, you're going to open up to, to what is, mm. to be in the now, to experience the now as is, instead of what you believe it to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a that's a great quote to uh to wrap up our wonderful conversation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. This was really nice. I fully enjoyed it and I hope the listeners you listener whoever is listening right now enjoyed it as much as as I did and I hope that you did too. Absolutely. Very much. <laughs> yeah. It was very nice talking to you about this. Is there, um, uh, if someone wanted to reach out to you personally, do you have like a website or something like that? I do, but it's in Dutch. But um, that's not a problem if you want to reach out. My my um, email address is there. There's a contact form. You can just in English write, write down whatever you want to write down. So, yeah. Is the, what's yeah. what's the address? Yeah, or is it the a- address. Yeah, it's um, www w dot uh elina that, uh, maybe i should spell it out yeah e- definitely <laughs> e l i n e s l u y s c o a c h i n g dot n l elina slaus coaching dot n l wonderful Okay, so if any of you want to get in touch with Alina, go for it. She's great. Uh, highly recommend hanging out with her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess, yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you for coming on. It was a pleasure. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. <laughs>